I'm Lawrence Brown. I'm assistant professor at Morgan State University in the School of Community Health and Policy. I've been teaching there since January 2013. And I want to talk to you today about Baltimore apartheid, the white L versus the black butterfly. And you can see on this map uh, that Baltimore is deeply divided along lines of racial and ethnic populations. Roughly down the middle and moving east at the bottom of the map, you can see an L. A blue, if you can see that L, uh, looks like kind of wider at the top and narrows as it moves towards the central part of the city. And then near the harbor, it begins to move east. Inside of the L, you can see the Asian population is clustered tightly within different segments of the white L. And then proceeding in east and west Baltimore, predominantly where our black population lives, in east and west Baltimore, extending out toward Baltimore County. And so I have dubbed that the black butterfly. The white L was something that I think I've heard here in Baltimore before, so I didn't come up with that, but I did coin the term black butterfly. And you can see our Hispanic population is on the southeast quadrant of this map, sort of clustered, actually pretty much between the black community and the white community around Patterson Park. You can see maybe a rectangle in the southeast quadrant of Baltimore. So this is uh, where we are today in 2010. The term hypersegregation comes from Douglas Massey, who wrote the book American Apartheid with Nancy Denton a couple of decades ago. His research is very pivotal in helping understand how our cities are divided today along racial ethnic lines. And so this gives us some sense of where we are today and some of the challenges that we face here in Baltimore City. Baltimore is in the top eight hypersegregated cities in the United States, along with cities like Chicago, Cleveland, Flint, Detroit, Birmingham, St. Louis, outside of which is Ferguson. So those are the cities where we're having massive challenges right now here in America. Uh, Flint has had a crisis in terms of lead poison in the water. Both Flint and Detroit are under emergency management by the state of Michigan. Chicago has had a great deal of racial turmoil and high amounts of homicides. Baltimore also high amounts of homicide and uh, uprising that we had on April the 27th, 2015. Birmingham is highly segregated. St. Louis, outside of which is Ferguson, had an uprising after the death of Mike Brown by police officer Darren Wilson. So these are cities where there are extreme amount of racial conflict. And this is what, in fact, sociologists Douglas Massey and Jonathan Tannen predict in their paper on hypersegregation that was published in 2015. I believe it was called a research note on trends in black hypersegregation. And so as we sort of think about Baltimore, I want to encourage you to think about how neighborhoods are virtually like soil in which flowers grow. And the flowers, in this case, are human beings. So neighborhoods are the soil in which human beings grow. And our neighborhoods have different types of soil. Uh, in the white L, the soil is very nutrient rich. Human beings can really thrive and grow to meet their full capacity in those neighborhoods. But in the black butterfly, the soil is not as healthy. And so what we have a situation where we have soil that advantages people who live in one type of neighborhood and soil that disadvantages people growing up in other neighborhoods. And so we are allowing the legacy of Baltimore's apartheid to remain intact by having this sort of racial segregation still be maintained, in fact. And so through policies and practices, some neighborhoods have structured advantage and other neighborhoods have structured disadvantage. So this is all very intentional policies and practices, and we'll review those throughout this presentation. All right, so we're going to take a break, 
And when we come back, we will discuss government enforced racial segregation. <laughs> 